Hey guys, welcome back to Titan Gamers and as you can tell from the title of the video, I have something super super big. So as of right now, everyone knows every single little thing about the 3080 RTX. But do you know anything about the 3090 RTX? Because I think I'm one of the first few in Singapore to actually have this. This is the MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio 24G. Damn. That's like a big mouthful. This is a whole handful. This is... Oh, I don't know how to explain, man. Literally, the 30 series is the greatest general leap. And even I think that's an understatement. So for all of you who bought a 2080 Ti in the past few months, I feel bad for you, son. But hey, you know what? I'm, I'm want to talk because I'm currently using a 2070 Super uh, Gaming X Trio as well. But you know what I'll be using from now on. So today, we are going to unbox it. Uh, we're gonna look at it. I, I feel like I don't even deserve to touch it, man. But yo, by the time this video is out, this would have already been on the shelf because I got it in advance. Thank you once again, MSI. And there's no price release yet. Even I don't know what's the price. So NVIDIA announced that the price for the 3090 RTX is around 1.5K USD, which translates to Singapore dollars is around 2 thousand dollars and that it already is enough to get you a pretty decent pretty damn good actually gaming pc since i don't know the price of this i'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is around 2.2k so by the time this video is released uh they would have already announced the price okay let's get it out of the box straight away I'm not so sure what we're gonna see i feel like i'm about to commit a sin a very bad sin okay so we've got an msi envelope in matte black. Let's see what's inside the envelope, alright? Thank you, no, thank you for choosing MSI. We've got the graphics card user guide. I might actually need it. Actually, I don't even know whether... Yep, I'll, I'll definitely need it. Ah, so this is the cute thing. So this is how to upgrade your PC with a new graphics card. And they put it in a comic style with the MSI Dragon. I think it's, it's, it's cute, you know, they, they still kept with the theme. I really feel like I don't deserve this, but here we go. Oh my god. Oh, dude. Okay, it's 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 heavy, man. When I say it's heavy, I mean like heavy, heavy. You know. That's why we got the support bracket. Hopefully, I don't make the same mistake and have to buy a new PC case. As you guys know, I had to buy a new PC case to support the twenty seventy. The moments you always been waiting for. I, I don't know why I'm nervous. I'm actually nervous. My hands are my hands are trembling, dude. To see this on screen and to see this in real life is too. Different things. All right, look at that. There you go, my dudes. There you have it. Rocking the triple fan, the triple award-winning Torx Fan 4.0. Do you have any RGB on the front? Yep, you've got your RGB here as well. A lot of cool things in here. All right, so so let's get into it part by part. So they're rocking the three. Torx 4.0 fan, as you can see, they're bounded by an outer ring design and it focuses on pushing the airflow into the updated TriFrozer 2 cooling system. Externally, you can't really see how the TriFrozer 2 actually functions, but I can tell you that you can actually catch a little glimpse of the core pipes right behind the fence here. So the functionality of the core pipes is to spread heat evenly across the heat sink, as you can see. Over here, the heat sink there, so the core pipes just run along here behind just spreading the heat out evenly. On top of that, you also have your heat pipes which are placed right beneath the matte finish backplate. It's located over here, right? So it's also to help you cool down the rear of your PCB. On top of that, there are thermal paddings on top of this, alright? There's a lot of things that's been updated. You can find everything you need to know about the cooling system in the link in the description below. And for the finishing touch, we also have the Zero freezer which means that the fans do not get activated until they have to. So let's say you're using your PC and your GPU is activated but as long as the temperature is at a certain level, the fans wouldn't move until it reaches a high temperature and where cooling is needed, only then will the fans move. And that is why this is one of the quietest GPUs staying cool and silent at all times. So there are three DP slots and one HDMI 2.1 slot and this will require three 8-pin 
for your power supply. Do I need to put in all 8 pins? I think so, yeah. The suggested PSU for this will be at 750 watts. Oh man, I'm behind again. I got a 650 watt. And like I mentioned earlier, this is slightly heavy, right? And it's actually around 1.5 kilograms, all right? And it's also reinforced by extra metal here to prevent it bending, you know? That's why we need a support bracket. So we bend rules over here. We don't bend cards. And the dimensions are 335 millimeters by 140 millimeters by 56. Like I was taught previously earlier, the PC slot, uh, you count it from the top of the GPU to the bottom of the fan where it needs to be. So this is about 56 mm and it's a triple slot. So for those of you who want to um, put this into your upcoming PC, uh, always make sure that you have enough space. Also, for your support bracket as well, okay? Don't, don't do the same mistake that I did. So there are 10,496 cores. The core clocks go up to 1,785 and the memory speed runs at about 19.5 gigabytes per second. So theoretically speaking, the 3090 RDX performs 15 to 20% better than the RTX 3080. But is it worth the price difference? Up to you. I'm not sure. You know, this is pretty nuts. Now, I know most of you think that this is crazy and you won't be able to afford it, but I'm here to tell you that MSI has a mid-tier GPU series called the Ventus. The difference is that the Torx fan are 3.0. Even though with the same amount of cores at 10,496, the core clocks when boosted goes up to 1,695. It's also definitely smaller in size and is definitely lighter. So if you're still looking for an RTX 3090, I suggest going for the Ventus, which we'll probably have on the next review as well. If you guys want to see it, let me know down in the comment section below. Just a quick reminder that this supports up to 8K 60p HDR gaming. So unless your monitor can support it, I don't see why you have to get it unless you already have plans to facilitate for that, which I probably will as well. All right, guys, so this is the MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Super Gaming X Trio in place with the black support bracket. Looks pretty simple, pretty uh, minimalistic with the, just a single strip of RGB here on top. Uh, MSI logo slightly lit as well. There's two more strips of RGB below here. You might not be able to see it too much because the room is pretty... Yeah, the, it's the lighting, it's the lighting, right? Maybe if in total darkness, you'll be able to see the RGB here, here below. It's not too strong. So this is like somewhat semi... RGB. It's not all out boom in your face RGB. It's like, yeah, you know, it's RGB, but it's, yes, yes. The first game I tried out the RTX 3090 with was Valorant. Now, I know Valorant is actually not the most optimal game to use for benchmarking because it's not really visually demanding, but I got a maximum frame rate of 320 and the lowest it ever got was 270. So there's like a 50 FPS difference over there. The next game I tried was Minecraft with RTX. Now, I tried this with the 2070 before and already think that it looked awesome. And with the 3090, it looked even more awesome and my frame rates kept at 110 with the low of 60. So it really depends on what you're doing because the amount of lights, shading and reflections really took out a lot of the GPU. The last game that I tried out the GPU with was Fortnite and it actually caught me off guard because without thinking, I pushed every single graphic settings to epic and the frame rates that I got ranged between 60 to 90. 60 when things were actually happening, when there were a lot of lights, shadows, distance rendering, and 90 was when I was simply just strolling around the neighborhood collecting materials. And so after gaming for about two hours, the GPU temperature actually kept at 70 degrees Celsius. So I think that's actually pretty optimal for me. Okay guys, so that's the end of the video. The results were pretty interesting. In my opinion, will I be getting it for myself? Maybe, but I, I think I'm leaning more towards the Ventus uh, side until I actually get a TV that supports uh, 8K. This will be on my wish list. Until then. All right guys, let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the RTX 3090 and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and watch our previous videos as well. So thank you and goodbye.